Hello, this is Dr. Paul Cottrell, and I'm recording this on December 5th. The uh, video that I just published is about part two for the white lung and why it's happening and how it's tied to AIDS-like syndrome. So please watch that on YouTube, Brighton, BitChute, and Rumble. Uh, I go into detail about the anatomy of the lymph node and the flow of lymph through the lymph node and how the interplay between T cells and B cells happen and the activation of the naive T cell CD4s and how they uh, produce T helper cells 1 to 17 and Treg. Uh, also, some of the cytokines that are tied, tied to it, tied to that. And then I went over at the very end about the class switching that's taking place in the lymph node between the B cell and the, and the T cell. All right. Um, part three will be me talking about AIDS-like syndrome in further detail. All right. Uh, then probably part four will be taking your questions. So it's a, it looks like it's going to be a four part series and uh, I'm not sure how I'm going to take your questions, probably through, uh, through X's spaces. I might uh, take your questions through phone calls. I, I haven't really thought about it yet. Maybe through a zoom meeting, uh, I, you know, maybe a combination. I don't know. I don't know. I, I'll have to think about it, but I will be releasing part three shortly, but please watch part one and part two. It's uh, the, the subtitle is China white long and why it's happening. All right. And so it's, there's part one and part two is out right now. Uh, there'll be part three and then part four will be the questions. So, you know, pay attention. I'm also going to be going over some of the latest and greatest uh, in the news. So this recording is going to be more tied with the Israeli conflict, uh, Israel and Hamas war. And uh, we'll begin. Thank you for listening. And I forgot to set up my spaces. For the show. So please hold on. This, I think, is episode eighteen, nineteen. Episode 19. Okay, so we will begin PNN. So let's uh, take a look at what Fox Business said about three hours ago. So this is three hours ago on Fox Business. Meanwhile, back in Washington, the White House says it is now considering a task force to guard ships in the Red Sea from Iranian proxy forces after three international commercial ships were attacked four times over the weekend. 
The USS Carney, which was responding, shot down three drones linked to Iranian-backed Houthi rebels during those attacks. Here's White House National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan on that. We have every reason to believe that these attacks, while they were launched by the Houthis in Yemen, were fully enabled by Iran. We are in talks with other countries about a maritime task force of sorts involving the ships from partner nations alongside the United States in ensuring safe passage, passage of ships in the Red Sea. Joining me right now is Fox News' the senior strategic analyst. He is chairman of the Institute for the Study of War, General Jack Key, back with us. General, great to see you this morning. Thanks so much for being here. What is your assessment of uh, the response to Iran, and how should the United States be responding after this weekend of attacks uh, causing the USS Carney to respond? Yeah, great, great, Maria. Certainly, I'm, I'm delighted to hear Jake Sullivan, the National Security Advisor to the President, uh, finally mention the word Iran associated with proxy activity in the region. They've avoided using that word for all of those attacks that have been committed against uh, U.S. bases by Iranian proxies from Iraq and from Syria. And now this Houthi attack is enabled by Iran, as were all the other attacks as well. So in, in my judgment, uh, a couple of things need to be done here. Certainly, the defensive measure to organize a naval task force to protect commercial shipping in the Persian Gulf, in the Red Sea, uh, in, the, in these vital navigation trade routes, that's absolutely the right move. We've done it before multiple administrations, and it has been successful. Second thing, though, that's defensive. If, if you want to stop the activity, you've got to step up and get offensive. And that is clearly go after the Houthis who are firing these rockets and missiles and drones. We know where they're coming from. We know where they're the drones are, we know where the people who are shooting them are, we know where the missiles and rockets are. Take a lot of that down and make that very painful for them. And then let's follow up on the word enabled by Iran that Jake Sullivan suggested is behind all of this and hold them accountable. We have plenty of targets that Central Command can provide to the administration. I doubt they're going to do that, but it's something they should have done weeks ago when the Houthi, excuse me, when the Iraq and Syria proxies up their game against the, the U.S. bases in the region. Right. But yes, the initial step with the task force is a, is a move in the right direction. I mean, does it feel to you like the U.S. and Iran are getting closer to some kind of an escalation here? Well, I think the United States should escalate. And in other words, to shut them down. Right. Uh, and, and yes, this is the calculation. Many people think, well, if you do, then we're leading to a war with Iran. But when you look at and analyze that 43-year Iran history, that's not the case. They use proxies because they don't want to be involved themselves. If they get directly involved with the United States, they lose their regime. They know that. I so that their escalation, I think, would be very minor because they want to avoid war with the United States. Well, I want to move on to Ukraine, but I also want to get into the NDAA. And get I think <clears throat> that Iran has planned for escalatory reaction if the United States or Israel hits Syria, Lebanon, or Iran, and that it's not going to be regional, and that most likely sleeper cells, especially in Europe and potentially in the United States, would be activated. That's the take I have. I think that we should escalate it. We need to knock out Hamas, Hezbollah, and Iran, and then there will be lasting peace, but it's going to get bloody. And this idea, oh, we're afraid, you know, America being afraid to get involved and a, a bunch of isolationists in this country, in the United States, is not the proper policy because we have been kicking the can down the road and having that kind of mentality for 50 years. The problems that we had in Iraq and Afghanistan post 9-11 is a different issue than what we have with Iran. It's a different issue. So... You know, we went into the Middle East right after 9-11 under false pretenses. 
and a never ending war because we couldn't get the, you know, we never really wanted to win. And it's the same thing here with Iran in the terms of not willing to go all the way to win. Right. But the issues of Afghanistan and Iraq and the issues with Iran and needing to, to end this are different, are different. If we don't solve this problem, it will get worse down the road with unconventional warfare. So now the assessment from General Keene, who I, you know, I watch quite regularly, but unfortunately he never won a war as general or even as soldier, not one war. So, but he has a lot of medals. But the thing is, is that we need to be more forceful. He's saying we need to be more forceful, but he also said that he doesn't think that Iran is going to be forceful back. Uh, no, I think Iran will be forceful back. And that, you know what, we need to see that. But, you know, Americans have been, you know, in a situation, in a, in a sweet spot, in a Goldilocks era where they haven't felt pain. And now it's time to feel pain. And once we start to feel pain, then we'll start waking up to, you know, some of the, you know, some of the real problems that are happening in this world that have been caused by the United States in many regards, but that can be solved by the United States in many regards. So, you know, we can be our own medicine in, in a strange way, even though we were part of the disease. But we need to go all out. We need to knock out Hezbollah, Hamas, and Iran. And these anchors, oh, you know, saying, well, is this going to escalate? You know, maybe this is going to be a wider war. Well, we've been kicking the can down the road for 50 years. It's time to get it done before it gets worse. And get your perspective there, sir. But first, Ukrainian President Zelensky is going to address U.S. senators at a classified briefing later today. And they'll talk about the war, the need for another round of U.S. military aid. It's ahead of the procedural test vote on President Biden's $106 billion supplemental spending package tomorrow. The package includes more than $61 billion for Ukraine. The White House is warning that it's going to run out of Ukraine aid by the end of the year if lawmakers do not approve the additional funding. And we're also quite worried when we hear things like, we're running out of money, we're running out of ammunition. Watch this. Congress has to decide whether to continue to support the fight for freedom in Ukraine as part of the 50-nation coalition that President Biden has built, or whether Congress will ignore the lessons we've learned from history and let Putin prevail. It is that simple. No, no, no. It's that. really simple. It's really simple. Once the Berlin Wall fell and the Soviet Union started collapsing, the United States went on an aggressive posture to grow NATO. And that put in place a person like Putin to rise in Russia, to rise up in Russia. And because of that, we are now in a situation where we needed a northern ally if we have an attack on China, but we don't because we had this old Cold War mentality against the, the Russians. The Russians, we need them as an ally to knock out China. So what we should do is stop funding fucking Ukraine and start aligning with Russia so we can attack China. It's the same issue that we had in World War II. Germany was defeated because there was a two-front war. There was a, a front in the in the West, and there was a front in the East. It was the United States and Britain, primarily, in the Western side, and the Eastern front was the Russians. And that's why Germany fell. Germany would not have fallen if it wasn't for the help by the Russians. It's the same thing that, that we can apply in the next conflict that's starting to arise 
because of what we're starting to see with the belligerence of Xi with Taiwan. It's going to be a lot bloodier for the United States when we get involved to try to maintain those sea lanes when China starts taking over the first island chains in the Pacific. Because we had this mentality that Russia must fall for the ever since ever since the fall of the Berlin Wall. The wrong policy. And so what I said, you know, in, in terms of the metaphysics of this, we're all being judged, we're all being cursed, and that some people will be blessed in, you know, near the tail end of this, depending on how we conduct ourselves. And the United States is being judged. And there's a curse coming down on it because of the activities since, well, I mean, the activities going all the way back to the 1950s. I mean, we created the problems in Iran, and now we got to clean it up. We have this runaway national security state, another runaway national security state that grew, that, that, that grew NATO. We caused the problems that we have with Russia today. With shock therapy by Jeffrey Sachs. And now we have, you know, the White House National Security Advisor saying we're running out of bullets. And then maybe our policy with Russia was a bad idea. Stop the funding in Ukraine, knock out Hezbollah, Hamas, Iran, and make sure that China cannot take over the first island chains. That should be our policy. It is that stark a choice. There is no magical pot of funding available to meet this moment. As Director Young said, we're running out of money and we are nearly out of time. Uh, your reaction, General? Well, I think aid to Ukraine is essential. I think we can do both, certainly. I mean, national security for the United States begins at the border. And this thing that I've never seen a general that said, oh, I have enough money. Oh, I have enough, you know, enough equipment. They always want more. No, I think, that, you know, you know, the thing with General King, even though I watch him quite a bit and I agree with most, a lot of the things that he has to say, you know what? America has been spending too much on the wrong stuff and not focused on the right stuff. Ukraine, Ukraine needs to be defunded. Thing that's been going on here for three years now is a disgrace. So certainly, moving in that direction to provide some measure of security at the border is absolutely the right answer. To anybody that's concerned about that, and as most Americans are, I totally agree. But Ukraine funding is essential. When he's saying we're out of money, is that no, it, it, our board? <laughs> Our border is more important than the Ukrainian border. Way more important. There's, there's, there's no more weapons that we can provide to Ukraine. What American people have to understand, the, the reality is the center of gravity for Ukraine to be where they are today, their ability to defend uh, against the Russian attack initially last year and to retake territory, 50% of the territory they've taken back. That's all due to U.S. and European assistance. If that stops, Putin wins. And guess who else wins? Russia wins, excuse me, China wins, and so does Iran. That's the reality. We see now how joined at the hip these three countries are. We've got to take a look at a strategic view with this and recognize that U.S. vital interests are involved here. Putin will not stop if he prevails in Ukraine. We already see he has plans for Eastern Europe, and that would directly involve U.S. troops. Let's stop him now yeah. with Ukraine troops and our military system. It and makes much more sense. Well, the world has become so much more dangerous in the last couple of years, in my opinion, and you have called this out 
uh, through the NDAA in the past, you've been critical of uh, declines in defense spending, flat performances in defense spending. So now we've got the annual Pentagon policy bill once again at hand. The we have been funding military operations with NATO for years. And our allies should have been paying for their share, which is what Donald Trump has been saying. So we are short of money because we have been helping too many other nations by fitting, footing the bill for them, especially for NATO. And it was a failed policy because we needed Russia for a two-front war against China. And because of all this, all this poor military planning in, you know, over -ex excursions in the Middle East in terms of Afghanistan and Iraq, with a failed policy, which is different than the problems that we're starting to see with Hezbollah, Hamas, and Iran. That's a different issue. But because of these poor military policies and poor military spending, it's come home to roost, especially in a higher interest rate, higher inflationary period that the United States is in right now. And we are walking into the same trap that the UK did right before World War I. The same trap. Their bond market was starting to become perturbed. Their cost to fund their operations started to become more exuberant. And it eventually cracked the empire and they start shrinking right after World War I. And that's the beginning of the rise of the, the US empire. But it was because of the bond market. Big why? Because they have they overextended their military operations and their and their empire. It's the same thing with the United States. Poor, poor financial planning and poor performance of the military led to this situation that we have today. And then you have a general that never won a war, not one, never. Never won a war, but has a lot of medals asking for more money. The NDAA has been a vehicle for other policies, but uh, in the Fiscal Responsibility Act, it increased defense spending by 3.2%. That was pretty much flat or even a decline when compared to inflation. What are your thoughts on the priorities for this current NDAA policy bill? out of the Pentagon, uh, how, how would you assess the numbers for defense spending, General, in this environment where the world has gotten so much more dangerous? Well, it's so, it, 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 the reason why the world is so much more dangerous is because we had failed military policies and focused on the wrong areas of the world. And now everything is happening at once and we're, we're caught off guard, financially and militarily. We are run by a bunch of fucking idiots. It, it is just not even close to where we need to be. We, yeah, we, just we, spend we, more we, money, we, General. We about 6%. And that's where we are now. I mean, two wars are going on in, in, in our vital interest areas, Europe and the Middle East. We spent trillions and trillions of dollars in Afghanistan and Iraq. How did that help us? We have postured ourselves to the point where we can't use Russia as an ally against China. And the real action today is in the Middle East with Iran and China. That's where the action is. And now we're out of money. Thanks, General. Middle East and President Xi is threatening a war. We have got to get a defense budget right, finally. Yeah. And the, the administration has got to change its priorities to do it. And that's what where the rub is. They don't want to take away from the domestic priorities to fund defense adequately. Yeah, that's right. And you've called that out for so long. And now here we are sitting in a position where the U.S. has a smaller Navy uh, than the Chinese Navy, which is something you've pointed out over and over. Wait, this is Fox Business.
Maria Bartiromo. It was the fucking U.S. FDI foreign direct investment into China for the last 20 to 25 years that built them up to the point where they can invest in their military. So it was a bunch of fucking hedge funds from New York that helped this problem to set in motion. Thanks. Fuck. Went over again. General, so... See, people aren't being honest on what the genesis of these problems are and how they're metastasizing, which is leading to the dark cloud that I've been telling everyone about that started on December 1st. There is, a, there is an emergent behavior of a bunch of black swans that are going to start to arise. All right, we're going to go to CNN because this is peeing it. Militants far from Israel's borders, stoking fears that the United States is on the brink of a wider war in the Middle East. Uh, the U.S. hitting multiple pro-Iranian targets in the region in northern Iraq. A U.S. drone strike killed at least five militants. U.S. officials saying that it was a preemptive strike to stop an imminent attack. And then when you look here, this is a, the Red Sea right here, uh, the U.S. shot down three drones launched by Yemen's Iran-backed Houthi militants and responded to four separate missile attacks against commercial ships. Uh, Iran-backed proxy groups actually have yeah. now... All right, so we have now attacks, 76 attacks since October 17th on U.S. installations, property, whatever, however you want to classify it, all right? in the Middle East. And we were spending so much time and so much money in Ukraine that ended up being, there's no gains. The people that live in Ukraine don't even want to fight for the war. And then we have this metastasizing situation that's happening in the Middle East that all of a sudden, and China is going to take this as an opportunity to take over the island chains. And, and that's going to end the hegemonic power that we have in the, in the Pacific. And what's going to happen is that World War III happens. It's probably not going to go nuclear like everyone thought. It's probably going to be conventional. But World War III is starting. It's not like when these things happen, it doesn't it doesn't happen on a, a particular day. Oh, World War, you know, the way they, they teach history, it's like World War One started on X date. World War II started on X date. World wars don't start on a particular date. It, it emerges over a, over time and it evolves. And we're in that emerging point. Now launched 76 attacks on U.S. and coalition forces in Iraq and Syria since October 17th. 76 attacks. Let's discuss this now. CNN military analyst, retired Air Force Colonel Cedric Layton. All right, so Colonel, and I'm going to go back here to the region so that we can see the 76 attacks. That is an awful lot. And this tit for tat. Colonel, what war did you win? Oh, none. No, I have. You know, since I'm, you know, in my 50s, I have a little bit of understanding of the history of of what's been going on in the last, 50, you know, five decades. Shit. These people are fucking retarded. For Tat, really seems to be escalating despite multiple warnings from the U.S. How concerned are you for the potential here of a miscalculation getting into a broader conflict? Oh, Brianna, it's a huge concern because we... See? It's a huge concern. We're worried. Get into the conflict. Solve the problem. Knock out Iran. Stop kicking the can down the road. A bunch of pussies. Well, we're worried about a, a, a larger conflict, and so Israel, uh, you know, stop you know killing babies, so we can make sure that the Democratic Party gets uh, reelected. 
because that's all we care about because we want expediency and pragmatic solutions, not a real solution that's long lasting for peace around the world. Shit. Where these attacks have occurred, uh, you, you know, look at the Kirkuk area, you look at uh, the Al Assad area, which is really over here. Uh, all of these uh, types of attacks really are challenging US security postures. Plus, you look at everything that has happened in the Red Sea. Uh, you have all these different places. We have spent trillions and trillions and trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars since I was born on military. And we get caught off guard with them shooting down our fucking drones and getting hit by missiles from Yemen? You gotta be fucking kidding me. Shit. This is plus, of course, what happened in Syria. So every single one of these attacks is a signal from Iran and its proxies that they are not only watching what the U.S. is doing, but it's also a signal that they are prepared to act against the U.S. should they feel the need to do so. The U.S. has, of course, surged its assets, right? It's got two carrier strike groups in the region. Well, start that using them. Seem to have worked fully as a deterrent. We still see what they're doing here. But what can the U.S. do to get the... We're going to play battleship. We're just going to move our ships and our subs into the region to scare the Ayatollah. Maybe he'll stop funding Hamas and Hezbollah. Great strategy, Colonel. To get them to knock it off. So one of the key things is where they deploy these carrier strike groups. So one of them is right here in the Eastern Mediterranean. Uh, the other one is right about here in, at the entrance to the Persian Gulf and maybe a little bit beyond that. Uh, so that's one thing is the proximity of these groups. Plus, they also have aircraft in places like Qatar, the UAE, uh, Kuwait, and even in Jordan. Uh, so these aircraft uh, can be used to move forward. They can also pre-position troops in other areas. So there are several options that the U.S. has. Plus, they can use any of these uh, strike forces to actually engage uh, these forces, the uh, Iranian proxies, and even Iranian forces themselves, should the president direct that. Mark my words. The United States is being judged. And if they keep on dragging their feet and knocking out Hezbollah, Hamas and Iran and helping in, in, in their dragging their feet and really helping Israel instead of being a hindrance, this country is going to have some serious problems and there's going to be a curse. And that curse is going to manifest in housing prices, in, in economic turmoil, in terms of the bond market and in jobs. And it's going to scare a lot of Americans because Americans are so used to being comfortably numb. And then on top of it, because of our, our runaway national security state through the CIA and other apparatuses, it created a lot of these problems. It's amazing. It's amazing. And so the Americans that are, that are listening, you know how they're, this is going to be paid for? They're going to truncate your, your social security. Watch. Watch. They'll truncate your, your social security because they have to clean up a mess that they kicked the can down the road for 50 years. Let's talk about the objective here. Why are these Houthi rebels, I mean, yes, they're attacking the USS Kearney, but attacking three commercial ships, what is the goal here? So actually, when it comes to the USS Kearney, it's kind of unclear as to whether or not they actually attacked the Kearney, uh, but the Kearney responded to protect these ships. But what they are trying to do is they're trying to limit commerce throughout the Red Sea. About 12% of all global commerce goes through this area right here. Which is I think he said 12%. Let's re replay that. I, because I'm going to make a point on the, the Straits of uh, the Taiwan Straits commerce throughout the Red Sea. About 12% of 12%. all commerce goes through. 12%. All right. We on the verge of potential World War III, and we need to attack Iran. All right. But we're on the potential of World War III for 12% of sea lane usage. It's a whole lot more through the, through the Taiwan Straits. 
Can you, magnitudes more. Do you understand why those first island chains are so important in the Pacific? Shit. Through this area right here, which is the Suez Canal. And the Red Sea is the line through which all these uh, ships pass. So 12% of global commerce a lot of it is controlled by European interests. Some of it is controlled also by Israeli interests. So every time that they think there's an Israeli related ship going through here, they want to interdict that ship. They want to stop it from moving. And when they do that, they think that they're hurting Israel's economy. That's a good point. All right, let's talk about the ground war uh, that the IDF is waging against Hamas. Now there is this movement towards southern Gaza. And actually, as we look, uh, the IDF has dropped leaflets. You have IDF tanks that were geolocated in the Khan Yunus area. Tell us about some of the issues this is going to raise when it comes to mobilizing people and keeping people safe. Yes, yeah, so this is a really interesting thing because at the beginning of the conflict after the 7th of October, everything was basically centered. All the Israeli attacks were basically centered in North Gaza and in the center. Tell us something we know. Gaza, which is really where Gaza City is. So all of this, basically about 50% of all buildings have been completely destroyed in this area, probably more than that actually by now. So now what's happening is the Israelis are moving south along the routes right through here. But before they this happened, before they moved south, they told all the uh, civilians in this area to move down south as well. But along with the civilians, Hamas fighters have also been interspersed within these areas. At least that's what the IDF thinks. And it's pretty likely that that's, that is in fact the case. And now we have the Israeli forces moving down here, coupled with air power. What they are trying to do is they're trying to go into all of these areas and eliminate as many uh, of the Hamas fighters as possible. But that's also going to impact the civilians. Yeah, it's a very scary situation for them. They feel that is such a generic explanation from Colonel. All right, Colonel Sanders. Amazing. Amazing. All right, what we're going to do is we're going to drop into Al Jazeera and, you know, raise our blood pressure from that. Some brigades' leaderships, they can talk in details about this, and it's not the right time yet to talk about this. Thank you. The enemy has failed to root us out from our land. The goals of Netanyahu and his army are unobtainable. What we are seeing is simply bloodlust. The words there of Osama Hamdan, a senior member of Hamas, speaking at that press conference. In Beirut, he went on to say, after 60 days of war, Netanyahu and his military have failed to achieve a single military or political goal. Well, we're joined now here. Well, that's not studio. true. I mean, come on. I mean, for, I, obviously, the tunnel system is getting destroyed and they're killing Hamas militants, right? So, I mean, it, objectives on the military side are happening and they said there were two objectives for, for the military knock out hamas and bring back as many hostages as possible so they they brought some back right and some some of the hostages back dead or alive and and um you know hamas is getting knocked out the tunnel system is getting destroyed slowly this is this is an operation that it's it, it it's it's complicated it's complex i mean it's They've had, they've been digging those tunnels in since 2010. That's for 13 years. Al Jazeera senior physical analyst. So what do you make of that speech there? Very much was it a sign of defiance that we're still standing, we're still here after 60 days of an incredibly brutal campaign. Yeah, it's interesting that you said that because it's, it's, because we live in a world where you know it, everything's a push button and hopefully everything you know you're, you're, you're you, it, it's completed you know and you you do DoorDash and you hit a button and you you know thirty minutes later you get your 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 food or whatever the whole society is push the button immediacy sixty days is not enough. 
to wipe out Hamas. And this thing can escalate into a northern front with Hezbollah. I mean, you know, Israel needs to be methodical and get the job done. And yes, there's going to be casualties. But if the civilians pay attention and get out of the way, not as many civilian casualties will happen. And you basically need to level the north and then you tell them and tell them to move north after you clean that up. Right. And then the NGOs come in for aid to set up for housing. And then you start blowing away the, the middle Gaza and you, you know, you keep on you keep on doing that all the way to the southern t tip of Gaza. And you just inch what inch it through and destroy everything. And have the NGOs rebuild it. If people care so much about the Palestinians, I'm sure that they'll be able, through the nonprofits, to be able to rebuild their society. Because let's think about this. Gaza is not that big. Gaza is like, think about Manhattan, pieces of the Bronx, and pieces of, the, of Brooklyn. All right? That's the size that we're talking about. Yeah, because that's my first of uh, <clears throat> five headlines that I can read into the speech. It started with a certain tone of defiance towards Israel, uh, Nazi government of Israel, as he called it, and he discounted or dismissed any possibility of swap or negotiations until there's ceasefire. And the second, there was a, a tone of confrontation towards the United States, accusing it of being complicit in the war crimes. And third, there was a dismissal of all accusations against Hamas. But don't, don't say anything about all the money that has been sent by the United States to the Palestinians. You know, the United States doesn't just fund Israel. It funds the, Pal the Palestinians. You know, Palestine wouldn't be standing if it wasn't for the United States funding. Us of having carried out any such things as rape, massive rape, or uh, decapitations, etc. He dismissed all of those accusations. And then he actually tried to draw attention to statements, I'm sure you've seen them on social media, of, of rabbis who are justifying the killing of civilians, quoting the Bible, the book of Deuteronomy, um, a reference to Amalek, which the Prime Minister of Israel, Absolutely. you and I spoke about this a few weeks ago. Absolutely. Well, you know, the thing is, here's the problem. Here's the problem. This is a really important, without me, you know, going off on the handle, this is biblical that's happening. And we're, be, we're all being judged. There's a metaphysical component to this. This is different than all of, the, all of the crises that we have seen in the last 30 years in the Middle East. This is much different. And we're being tested. And if we're on the wrong side, there's going to be a curse. If we're on the right side, there's going to be a blessing. The more of us that go on the right side of this, and that blessing happens, there's peace on this earth. And there are evil, there, there's a, there's, there are evil soul roots, and there are good soul roots. And the evil soul root that we're trying to root out here is this, in the manifestation in this plane, the manifestation in this world, it, what, how we see it, is this Hamas, Hezbollah, Iran, terrorism, ISIS kind of Islamic jihad kind of stuff, all right? But the soul root of that is Esau. And Ishmael, especially in this context right now that we're worried about, it's the Esau component of the soul root. And they're animals and they're killers. And, it, and it's it, this thing has been written down for thousands of years that you got to deal with Esau. So you put on your international affairs hat, and, you know, and be a, a liberal and a, a non-observant Christian or a non-observant Jew or a non-observant Muslim. And, you, you know, you put your hat on and you're just, you know, using, you know, liberal 
logic, you know, you're going, well, we can't pay attention to anything that's written in the old, the, the old texts. We can't pay attention to the, that larger arc of history in that region. We can't pay attention to the un, the unequivocal, uncanceling covenant that the Jews have. No, we can't, we can't deal with that. We have to only look at just the UN charters and, you know, this Westphalian concept of peace and prosperity and not pay attention to the nefarious things that the national security state has been doing since the 1950s. No, we can't pay attention to that. And it led us down to a road where now we, we got to pay the price through blood and through treasure and through more destruction. And everyone's getting judged. Even the, even the ultra liberal Jews that are non-practicing are getting judged. About 15 years ago, it was the ultra Orthodox that were being judged and they were killed during terrorist attacks. Follow my logic, and I did this on a previous video, but it applies to what's going on with the white lung. Just follow the logic, all right? The ultra rabbis didn't pay attention, or the ultra, I should say, the ultra orthodox didn't pay attention and try to make peace with the liberal Israeli Jew, all right? And so terrorism that was taking place about 15 years ago, most of the the most that were killed were Orthodox. Then several years later, it happened to be pairs of children. Now, this is an important point because the Orthodox community, the most important thing to them is their children. All right. So the Orthodox adults didn't pay attention to the warning with the curse because they were not making peace with the liberal Jew. And so God said, okay, I'll take away some of your children through terrorist attacks. Now, still, there's still conflict between the Orthodox and the ultra liberal Jew. That's non-observant to the point where ultra liberals are trying to prevent people from praying during high holy days. And then during this incident in October 7th, most of the people that were killed and most of the people that, that, that were um, held hostage were ultra-liberals. Now, fast forward to where we're at with White Lung. All right. In 2020, we had a, an event that took place through nefarious things that were going on with the national security state that hurt and killed over a million people in the United States and harmed multiple millions through their inoculations. And the adults of the world and especially of the United States didn't have the wherewithal to stop the national security state from making things that they shouldn't be making. And now, fast forward to 2023, where now children, pediatric patients, are seeing the signs of opportunistic infections because of a, a deficiency in their immune system, which is what I call AIDS-like syndrome. This is another curse because adults didn't do the right thing when they were supposed to. And that is no different than the curse that took place 15 years ago on the ultra, the, the ultra Orthodox community for not making peace with the liberal Jew. They didn't do what they were supposed to do. Just like the adults didn't do what they were supposed to do in 2020 and shut down the fucking labs. And now there's a curse that's taking place on children. That's the metaphysics of this that people need to pay attention to instead of thinking that they can, they can rationalize this in some, in some sort of Aristotle book. About invoking a verse from the Bible that 
talks about the need when you fight your enemies to kill the parents, the children, and even their animals. Even infants. Yes, and you went back to that. And then there's the fourth uh, headline that I read into that, which is a bit of a disappointment from uh, the way the international organization... Don't forget, don't forget, though. Don't forget. Ishmael is an animal. And Esau is an animal. They act like animals. Organizations, especially humanitarian organizations, have been carrying out their mission, and he basically like, appealed to international organizations and international media to carry with their responsibility, to fulfill their, to fulfill their responsibility. And last but not least, he once again, of course, as you would expect, uh, rallied Arabs and Muslim countries, including those scholars of Al Azhar, to open up uh, and, and to break the siege. Uh, that has been imposed on on uh, on the Palestinians. And just quickly, Sami, to echo what he said in, in that confrontational tone, because that's really the cost of the matter, is this confrontational uh, kind of confident tone on the part of Hamas. I was just reading the new released report from the Washington Post, yet another damning report from the Washington Post today, talking about why most of Hamas's forces in Gaza remain intact. Imagine, after tens of thousands of casualties, more than 16,000 dead, more than 5,000 children killed, Hamas's forces, according to the Washington Post, only 5,000 of 30,000 Hamas forces have been eliminated, according to the Washington Post. And why, why Hamas remains in control of at least a third of northern or city of Gaza so that goes to uh, really underline what uh, Mr. Hamdan is saying and why he's being so defiant mm -hmm. in his tone towards Israel, basically accusing Israel of committing the crimes and yet failing to achieve its objective, which is defeating Hamas. All right, we're going to leave this here for now, Marwan. We probably will be coming back to you, but uh, we've got to pick up on some other lines coming through. And uh, we reported earlier that Israeli soldiers have been raiding towns and cities in the occupied West Bank. Areas near Bethlehem and Janine have been targeted again. Let's head over to Ramallah. Brilliant. Hola, Abdul Hamid. And hola. I want to ask you, first of all, about a really disturbing video that's come to light of a special needs man being targeted. Talk us through that. Yeah, it is actually indeed very disturbing and has infuriated many here. Um, I mean, you clearly see in the video. This is PNN, and because I do things what I want to do, because I'm Dr. Paul Cottrell, I'm having some cheese. But I'm really hungry, because arguing at my monitor burns a lot of calories. All right. Now, what I want to do is I want to read, I want to go and scrub back a little bit on the on the Al Jazeera live feed. Hopefully I can get to it. Um, and there was this rabbi that was being quoted. And it's, let's see if we can get to that piece and then play it because we missed it while we were playing the other videos. Okay. Yeah, the, no negotiation, no swap without seizing and stopping the aggression against our people and against Gaza and here I think I, I got the point here. Across all the cities of the West Bank and its camps and in Jerusalem as well. This enemy is waging a barbaric brutal war against our people across all the occupied lands. These massacres will not break our will. And such massacres will not allow the Nazi occupation to meet their objectives. These people, our people who are writing the annals of an epic and a legendary battle, telling the story of a hero people defending their land and their sacred lands. Despite, despite all the American claims, there are no safe zones in Gaza Strip. As the occupation army is claiming, 
the occupation has transformed all the lands of Gaza into an open war zone for their machine, for their war machine targeting men, women, and every living, moving thing. And uh, yesterday was the for the 67th anniversary of Khan Yunus massacre that was committed in 19. There was supposed to be peace that was starting to take hold right before October 7th. Hamas, who's the official that's that's speaking, all right, in Beirut because he's a pussy, all right, he's basically blaming the Jews for October 7th. My understanding is they shot so many damn rockets that Hamas shot so many damn rockets that it over, overloaded Iron Dome on top of breaching the, the border. Now, there's some question on was there intelligence failures and all that. Yeah, there probably was. But the bottom line was this. Hamas attacked Israel on October 7th. Period. Full stop. Now, the Jews are pissed off. And in a strange, really weird way, the actual ultra-liberal Jew is now aligned with the, the Orthodox Jew to kill Hamas. I'm telling you, we are living in biblical times. And okay, by the way, when I say something, uh, I'm usually right. And that's why I have a mug that says, I'm never wrong. Nineteen fifty-six, which was during the aggression launched by Israel, France, and the UK. France that is teaching us lessons about freedom. And on those, on that year, five hundred and twenty martyrs were killed. And today, this Nazi enemy is reliving the same massacre against our unarmed civilians, the children and grandchildren of those people who were killed in the earlier massacre. This enemy that knows nothing but the language of massacres and displacing people or annihilation of the entire people. However, this objective did not materialize and will not be achieved as our enemy has failed in rooting us out from our land as they promised. Here we reiterate our warning from all attempts and all plots that are in sync with this Israeli uh, plot to displace our people from the Gaza Strip under whatever pretext. These all are plots and Zionist plots and American plots on the account of our of the blood of our people and every, anyone who's involved in such plots and plans, no matter how good intentions they say, they are partners in such a crime, a crime of genocide and displacement. And here, very confidently, we say that the goals of Netanyahu and his army are unattainable. And what Netanyahu is doing is just a revenge and a thirst for blood. This is not a sign of victory, but rather a sign of defeat. Asama Hamdan is the senior official speaking for Hamas in Beirut. So let me get this straight. The war is in Gaza, but you're hiding in a safe area. And you're a Hamas official. Huh, isn't that strange? And then, blame all the casualties on the Israelis, even though Hamas dug into the civilian population. It, and the fall of his government and to be convicted and persecuted as a war criminal. The real objective of Netanyahu and his military is to eliminate the Palestinian people and kill the issue and kill the cause. 
and to decide this conflict. And this is an impossibility. And if there is any other Satan or any evil other than him, after 60 days of war, Netanyahu and his military couldn't achieve a single military nor political victory. It's a dream that will never come true to him nor to his military. No matter how long the war would last, we are well prepared. Over 75 years, this enemy has never claimed victory against our people. Our people have always been in resisting and therefore they can never win against Hamas and they can never claim victory against our Palestinian people. And here I would like to confirm that Netanyahu and his war staff are sinking deeper and deeper in the swamp of Gaza. They all couldn't liberate a single captive except according to our terms. And here we reiterate that there is no negotiation, no swap without seizing and stopping the aggression against our people and against Gaza. And here we hold Netanyahu full responsibility for the lives of the Israeli and Zionist captives as he have foiled and hindered the swap deal as he resumed his attack against Gaza. They are under the threat of being killed by the bombardments of Netanyahu's war machine. And it now has become clear to us that Netanyahu doesn't care about these captives doesn't care about their families and he doesn't care about their lives. We would like to reiterate to the Nazi occupation government that the, that the Al-Aqsa Mosque will continue to remain a purely Islamic mosque and they will never have sovereignty over that mosque. And we say to the people of the temple, that extreme group, to violate and desecrate Al-Aqsa Mosque, we tell them that Al-Aqsa flood will not stop and will continue until you are defeated and swept away from our land, from our sacred sites. As, as to the continued humanitarian suffering, the occupation didn't suffice with, um, with inhuman massacres. Our enemy continues to perpetrate the crime of starvation against more than 2 million Palestinians by their siege and not allowing humanitarian aid. Those who didn't die by bombardments are dying because of starvation and anyone who hinders the access of aid into Gaza is a partner in such a crime against our Clinically, starvation is not that many days away from food, all right? <laughs> so, you know, you go through starvation when you start, uh, you know, burn, burn off your carbs and you've already burned out all your glycogen and now you're, you know, in ketosis, right? Right. And, you know, and so it doesn't take that many days. Now, there is no one in Gaza that is dying from starvation. All right. I mean, that's just overblown. Now, they are dying from bombs. They may be dying from, you know, lack of medical care. They may be dying from, you know, because of a war torn environment does have disease. You know, they may be dying from that. They're not dying. They're not dying from starvation. It's our people and shall bear the responsibility of the repercussions of such a crime. Not allowing all requirements for basic human life, including water wells, bakeries, hospitals, electricity generators, and shelters we are warning that the number of martyrs will increase due to thirst and famine, which is warning of a humanitarian catastrophe. Therefore, we call upon the Arab and Muslim nations 
to bear their humanitarian and ethical responsibilities. It's the right of our people to live a free and dignified life without, without siege, without bombardment, without aggression, and without threat. No Israel will feel safe if our people didn't enjoy the same. See what he would say is you get everything you want, Mr. Hamas, but you got to give the Temple Mount back. And they'd go up in flame. Everything would, they, they would go berserk. Because this is all about the Temple Mount. That's fine. Esau has always wanted what Jacob was given. There is a certain blessing that Jacob had that Esau sold. So he sold his rights to. Esau sold his rights to Jacob. And now Esau is wanting what the children of Jacob has. That's what this is all about. All of it. We are it's an increasing number of massacres against civilians with the increased number of killed and injured among the displaced in shelter zones. We reiterate our call to the following. We call upon the honor war and the WHO to assume their humanitarian and ethical responsibilities to continue supplying our people in Gaza with the humanitarian aid and not to cede to the demands and terms and conditions of the occupation. Actually, we can't understand the position of honor what is funding and heeding the demands of the occupation against their mandate. We also call upon international humanitarian and medical organization to intensify their access to all areas of Gaza and aid the residents of Gaza with all humanitarian aid. We call also upon all Arab and Muslim countries to move seriously and immediately to break such a siege against Gaza and to open humanitarian uh, corridors and to open all hospitals across all Gaza with all medical disciplines and supply the Gaza Strip with the fuel, medicine, water, and food. Third, in, in this long series of lies of the Israelis and the Americans, the American administration with the statements of their officials continues to, to adopt the, the Zionist narrative without verifying or vetting any of such information. Latest is the statement of the National Security Advisor of the United States that the, uh, that the occupation's army does not target civilians in Gaza. This is a lie, a blatant lie. It's uh, more than 70% of 16,000 martyrs are women and children. And definitely, in their eyes, they are not civilians. Uh, you can expect uh, what would be the advice and the counsel of such national ad security advisor, and what would the decisions of such administration would look like based on his advice. The claims and the lies of the Zionists claiming that some of their women have been raped Actually, this is to, to cover and underscore the, the human treatment of our fighters with these individuals. Such scenes have, have disturbed the Nazi regime. They have tried desperately to dehumanize our people. We say that these false claims are in their sick imagination of extreme Zionist individuals that allows that that allows the, the Zionist soldiers allow the Zionist soldiers to rape the women of others and and this is per, and this is this is supported by this individual who's the military rabbi in the Israeli defense forces who allowed 
and permitted sanction to the soldiers to rape non-Jew women, saying that when we are intended, the, the Torah has allowed us to satisfy the soldiers' needs for women. And it is permissible to engage in sexual activity with women during war against their will. And this is another rabbi, Rayon Linovin, talks. I don't know the details of this, all right? Because, you know, this is probably being said in, you know, in different languages. I don't know if it's in Arabic or if it's, you know, in Hebrew or whatever. I don't know. But, you know, but the thing is, is that, you know, these things that this this spokesperson saying, I can't verify because I I don't know about this. Now, if they did say this, it's wrong. I have a hard time believing that they said it. You know, at least on how he's framing it. So I just, something that doesn't seem right. All right. I just, why would a military rabbi say these same types of stuff in the middle of a big, gigantic PR campaign that's happening with the Israeli Hamas war? So I, it just doesn't, the smell test doesn't seem to pass. <laughs> Talks, talks about permitting, but rather the need to kill, to, to kill children in the war. Because the ideology that a child will grow up with is even worse than the ideology of his father. That's the reason why the Torah in the, the book of Deuteronomy 16 says rules of war do not allow anyone to remain alive. Nothing. No mercy. Furthermore, the book of Deuteronomy chapter 25 verse 19 Machor and Zechel Amalek completely erase any memory of Amalek, which means men, women, and children, the Torah says, do not have the right to exist. These are the... Okay, now that rabbi, so there was two different rabbis. There was the, the first rabbi that he didn't play a clip. He just showed a picture stating things, so I can't verify it. The second rabbi who was speaking English, obviously, because we are English speakers, we could hear that. Now, he was quoting a verse in Deuteronomy in the, in the worry that if you don't do all war, you. And I said this on a previous on a previous video. If you don't do full war. Then you may create another war down the road. All right. And so there has to be absolute destruction. Now, the, now that was during the, the biblical times that he's quoting from. Now, the question has to be made, are we living through a time that's very similar where all war has to take place? And that's a question that we all have to ask ourselves. All right. To solve this problem, does, is it an all war situation where it's an absolute destruction of the enemy and there's nothing left. Or is it that there's, there is a less of this issue. There, there's a, a lesser degree of this issue compared to what was happening during biblical times that was written in Deuteronomy. Okay. We don't know that question. We, we don't, we don't know. That, all right. What we do know though, is, is that if we do half war with Hamas and Hezbollah and Iran, that we are going to have further conflict down the road because that's what we've been doing for the last 50 years. So part of what the rabbi is saying is right. Now, he's taking a very, very absolute stance, right? And that is... There's this battle between the, 
Jacob's children, all right, and the descendants of Esau, because it was Jacob and Esau that were the Trump twins, and they've been battling each other when they were alive. They were battling each other, you know, in a metaphysical way and in a physical way. And the descendants of Jacob and the descendants of Esau are battling each other today. Now, it may be, you know, full cage match brawl to the death. Either all of the Jews in Israel are destroyed, right? Or all of the Ishmael is destroyed. And maybe that's what brings lasting peace in the world. That's possible. Or is it that we just have to root out just the 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 um, uh, the extreme element of you know of of this population, which is Hamas, Hezbollah, and I and and you know the funders and the backers in Iran. And this goes all the way to the Ayatollah. So it may not necessarily mean absolute destruction and killing of all the children and all of the, the civilians within Gaza. It could be interpretation that you're killing all of the Hamas militants, all of the Hezbollah militants, and, just, and, and killing the Ayatollah. And that will usher in. That, that's, that could be too in this era that we're in. But the rabbi is taking an absolute stance. But the bottom line is, is this, that rabbi is right in this regard. It's a battle between Jacob and Esau. The Jews represent Jacob. Esau is represented by the Palestinians and, and the, the supporters that they have that are happening in, in Lebanon and Syria and Iran. And that's the reality of the situation. You know, absolute war is, is destructive. And most wars, most wars aren't won. It's just that someone lost more. In absolute war, absolute destruction, then there is a winner in a war. Because in that case, War between those two can never arise again because there was a winner of the war. But most wars is a capitulation because someone was losing more. But it wasn't that it was won. And that's the reason why wars seem to rear their head again and again periodically throughout human history. Because that war wasn't completely executed. That's the proper interpretation of what's being quoted in Deuteronomy. So as citizens of the world, we have to ask the question. And we got to be honest. Do we want this war to continue into the future? If we don't, there has to be absolute war and absolute destruction of one of the sides. If we want, if we want to see this transpire later in the future, then half war that we've been doing for the last 50 years. It's up to us. We're being tested. And if we pick the wrong side, if we pick the wrong path, there will be more destruction and mayhem, and it'll cost more, and there will be more deaths down the road. That's the reality of this. And that's because mankind has been off the rails for so long. And we're all at fault. The Israelis are at fault, the Palestinians are at fault, Hamas is at fault, the United States is at fault, everyone is at fault. The question is, are we going to be the generation that gets it done and it no longer is affecting future generations? We are not going to be the generation of the Messianic era. We are not going to benefit from it. But we could launch it for future generations. 
And is it worth it to uh, annihilate the enemy so a further conflict down the road doesn't happen? And I would say yes. The reason why is because the wars are moving towards an unconventional means to the point that if biologics are used in an unconventional warfare, which there's low barriers of entry, and the Iranians are pretty smart, it will affect the genome. It will affect the germline. You know what that means? It means that children that have parents that have a, a germline that's been affected in biological warfare will pass it on to their children, and their children will pass it on, and their children will pass it on. You can't get rid of it. Is it worth killing the enemy absolutely to prevent that from happening? If you want to be intellectually honest, you would have to say yes. The doctrine of their rabbis and their clergymen. And here I ask when Blinken, the State Secretary of State who identifies himself as a Jew, does he listen to such words when he deals with the Palestinian issue, permitting the killing of children and allowing the rape of women as the rabbi of the Zionist army breach. I don't know if that rabbi said that or not because he didn't. I, if he did play the clip, I didn't catch it, and I don't know. I, it, he probably, would, and even if it was spoken in a different language other than English, I wouldn't know. I couldn't verify it. I don't know if this guy is saying the truth or not. But if he did say it, it's wrong. It's just wrong. It's you know the, what the rabbi is saying that was tied to the military. That's just wrong. And that's that's not being that's not being a a real Jew, and that's that's just it's not even being a, a a good human being. It's just wrong. There is some code of conduct in terms of warfare, and that's definitely not it. But the other rabbi that was speaking English, you know what? I can understand why he has the position he has, because it's about do you want to end the war permanently, or do you want to kick the can down the road? because the acorn doesn't fall far from the tree. And that's a fact. Breaches, we call upon all media outlets all around the world to continue covering the suffering of our people in Gaza Strip and the heinous crimes perpetrated against them, which expresses the true nature of this Zionist entity and to work with all professionality and objectivity to reveal the lies of the Zionist discourse. And, and such an act and such bias uh, to the Zionist uh, discourse constitutes a partnership in this crime. The con some Western media outlets continue to uh, perpetrate lies serves only the agendas of the occupation will not save them from prosecution before the law. We call them to rectify their mistakes. This is PNN and I have to go to commercial. Please go to my store, the-studio-reykjavik.com because you know what? Your immune system is down because you're constantly watching the news that makes you upset and raises your blood pressure. It makes you eat too much, too many donuts from Dunkin' Donuts. So please go to my store, the-studio-reykjavik.com and start getting healthy. Follow my anti-aging protocol. Boost up your immune system. We're in the cold season. And there's a lot of crazy stuff going on, like mycoplasma pneumonia and RSV, and influenza, and coronavirus, and, you know adenovirus and, and you know there's a lot of crazy stuff going on so because we're in the cold season in the united states all the way through march please go to the store and get the products that will help boost up your immune system i have these structural nano silver lozenges neutralized pathogens that help soothe your throat i have them in in drops and in lozenges
form. The drops are 100 count, and I have them in blueberry and in honey lemon, 100 count. And then the lozenges, I have them in apple, a green apple, 20 count, and sweet menthol, 20 count. The lozenges are larger than the drops. That's the reason why there's a difference in the, in the count. Another way to, to help support your health is to go to my store and get the structural nano silver toothpaste that I have. I have the best toothpaste that you can get. All right. So go to the store, the-studio-reykjavik.com. Link is in the description of this video. And this toothpaste does not have any fluoride in it. It has the structural nano silver. It'll neutralize pathogens. It'll whiten the teeth. It will freshen the breath. It will reduce that gum inflammation. And by using this product, you're going to reduce your chances of, of poor oral hygiene that causes cardiovascular disease or valvular disease. All right. Cardio parts of parts of cardiovascular disease is caused by poor oral hygiene. And it's through the bacteria that is in the mouth. All right. You want to neutralize that. All right. Colgate isn't going to neutralize it. All you're doing is scraping away. But structural nanosilver neutralizes the pathogens. And that's the reason why it's better. And oh, by the way, my toothpaste is a lot better than anything that Alex Jones sells. So instead of supporting Alex Jones, why don't you support my content by going to my store, the-studio-reykjavik.com and getting a few tubes of this toothpaste. It's the best toothpaste that you can get. And I'm not speaking in hyperbole. Go to my store and get the structural nano silver soaps. Guess what? It neutralizes pathogens and they smell great. So this one is, is lemongrass scent. This one happens to be lavender, but I also have three other versions. So please go to the store, the-studio-rakepick.com. Because people have a, an immune system that isn't working as well as it should be, you need to boost it up. And I have a lot of products that boost up your immune system. One of those products is lignans, all right? It's a, a flax hull powder, and it will help to boost up your immune system and help with your hormonal health. It's for males and females. And by the way, when you boost up your immune system, your CD8 cells will be better, your natural killer cells will be better, your CD4s will be better. And that's how you fight cancer. And because we're in the cold season and you need zinc and magnesium to help boost up your immune system, notice the theme here, it's all about boosting up your immune system. Magnesium and zinc, Take this every day. If you're not feeling well, take a double dose of this and it, it will help to boost up your immune system. Get those products on my store, the-studio-reykjavik.com. The link is in the description underneath this video and all my videos. We're going to go back to Al Jazeera so we can have higher blood pressure. And to retract such an approach that would uh, that would that would question their accountability and can hold them accountable legally. In conclusion, we reiterate our call to the people of our. Now remember what I said about Ishmael. Ishmael, or not Ishmael, uh, Esau. Esau. It, you know, it's the brother of Jacob, and there's a lot of hate between the two, and blah blah blah. Ishmael is uh, uh, Esau. Esau is a is a very smart guy, all right. And he's he's a hunter, and he's hairy, and he likes killing, all right. But he's smart too, all right. And he's cunning because he's a hunter. Well, Jacob is more of a scholarly type person and more a more compassionate person, all right? And a hard worker. Now, you have this Hamas official trying to spin this 
that it's the Israelis' fault when they launched all of these missiles on October 7th. No one denies the fact that they, they overloaded the Iron Dome. They attacked Israel. And Israel isn't supposed to respond. And why did they attack when there was supposed to be a peace agreement that was supposed to take hold? Because Iran doesn't want that. Because they're, Iran is a different version of Islam than Saudi Arabia. Now, Saudi Arabia is more aligned with Ishmael. Now, why is that important? Because Ishmael is the brother of Isaac, right? Because they came from Abraham. And it's through Isaac and Ishmael that's going to kill Esau. But they want to spin it that it's Ishmael's fault and Isaac's fault and Jacob's fault. But remember that Esau is a very cunning person. He's a hunter. And it's the Israelis' fault. And then you have the liberal, you have the liberals out there. They're buying into the rhetoric of the, the Hamas officials. With all the emotional fouls. Power up and, and Muslim nations to escalate all sorts of demonstrations and vigils across all plazas in rejection of the occupation's war against our people and to uncover their crimes. And I would like to confirm here that this movement, in addition to the action of the resistance in the field and our people standing fast on their land, this will limit the window, the time window of this aggression. We also would like to, ap to appreciate the efforts by the countries that have received our injured uh, citizens to support them and we. We welcome all support to continue our resistance on our land and for all attempts for displacement. Now, I'm gonna say something that's very metaphysical. Right? without trying to get too, too riled up. But if you look at the term, you look at the name Israel and Ishmael, the L is showing that there's, there's a strong holiness to it. Esau doesn't have that. So even in the name, there is going to be a, a peace or a working together between Israel and Ishmael to get rid of Esau. Hamas, Hezbollah, Iran, they're coming from the soul root of Esau. And in this plane, we saw it through the Abrahamic Accord. Now, even the term Abrahamic Accord, Abraham begot Ishmael and Israel, Isaac, all right? Those two are the ones that were in negotiations with this Abrahamic Accord. The Abrahamic Accord has always been about getting rid of Esau. On this point. But there's a, there's a metaphysical thing that's going on with Israel and Ishmael working together. Now, you may think that I'm crazy on this, but I'm not. There is a big, there is a metaphysical thing that's happening, and people are getting judged. The systematic violations and heinous crimes perpetrated against our prisoners in the in the prisons of the occupation, we demand on all humanitarian organizations and inter international organizations to exert pressure on the occupation to allow visitation to such prisoners. 
and denied Bunifir's enjoyment and pleasuring himself visiting the prisons simply to, to, to please himself by watching them suffer. If we would like to hail and salute the Al-Azhar position um, and, and announce, announcing um, granting Palestinian students scholarships to study at Al-Azhar University. And we call upon Al-Azhar Imam to lead a movement of scholars across the entire nation to break the siege against Gaza and allow humanitarian aid across the Rafah crossing. And we call upon the scholars to adopt such an idea and make it a reality on the ground following the hadith of the prophet. No Muslim can sleep with his stomach full while his neighbor is starving. In conclusion, we pray Allah the Almighty to heal the injured. This is a jihad, it's either victory or martyrdom. And thank you very much. If you have any questions. Okay, so that was the live feed from Al Jazeera, but I had to play it back a little bit to get the, the piece about the rabbis. The bottom line is this. Israel needs to root out Hamas at the very minimum, but if they really want to solve the problem, you have to root out Hezbollah, which is the northern problem, and then you got to root out the problems that are happening in Iran, which the core of it, the, the root of that is the Ayatollah. The assassination of the Ayatollah has to happen. And the, the infrastructure they have in terms of nuclear weapons has to be destroyed. So, you know, but, you know, people won't pay attention and we're going to see the dark cloud that started on December 1st this year starting to get, get darker and darker and coalesce and, and People won't be paying attention and it'll be curses. And those curses are going to be the mountains of security that, that the Western society thought they had in terms of their finances, in terms of their health, the, you know, their, their uh, medical care infrastructure, and in terms of their national security. They're, it's going to melt like wax because people don't understand that it is... We are blessed continuously through a divine light. But that divine light can restrict itself to such a point where that blessing is no longer there. And at times, there can actually be a curse that's transmitted through that light. And depending on how we act as human beings in the aggregate, depends on if this world is going to be blessed in the aggregate. But there's also individual lights that are happening at the individual person level, right? And depending on how you handle this problem is going to depend on if you're going to be blessed or if you're going to be cursed. And if you want to side on the ultra liberal blue haired person that's screaming that Israel is a bunch of baby killers, but you go to an abortion clinic three weeks before. Doesn't hold a lot of water at the, at the metaphysical level. Are you for saving children or are you not? If you, if you are for saving children, then abortion rights have to be uh, abolished. See, there's, there's a lot of things about our modern society that just, it's not... It's not philosophically coherent. That's my take on it. I know people will disagree with me. I don't really care. Please go to my store, the-studio-rikovic.com and get the good night formula because you got a bunch of Hamas leaders running around wanting Islamic Jihad and you can't sleep and they're disrupting your REM sleep. And so you start to age more. Well, you don't want to do that. So go to my store, the-studio-rakevic.com and get the goodnight formula. Why? Because it'll put you into three cycles of REM sleep. Why? Because it has tryptophan and melatonin in it. You can take this regularly. And by doing that, you will get those three cycles of REM sleep. Your body will start to detox better. 
you'll have more energy when you wake up in the morning and you will have consolidated memory. Your memory consolidates while you're sleeping, not when you're awake. Multivitamin. You need multivitamins as cofactors for proper enzymatic activity. So go to my store, get the multivitamin that, that I offer, all right? It is a high quality multivitamin. It is easy to digest. So go to the store, the-studio-reykjavik.com and get the multivitamin. I have the best antioxidant that you can get, all right? And why is that important? Because you want to neutralize those free radicals, right? And free radicals are these, these um, react these oxygens that are charged. They're negatively charged and they cause a lot of damage in the cell. And that's why we age. When you're older, you have more free radicals. So you want to absorb those. You want to, to neutralize those, right? Well, you can absorb and neutralize those through C60. C60 is a buckyball, right? It's a 60 carbon molecule that will soak up reactive oxygen species, soak up free radicals and prevent cellular damage. When you do that, you have better health in the cell and your mitochondria will actually improve. When your mitochondrial health improves, you have more ATP. When you have more ATP, then the cell has the energy to do its functions. On top of, you need ATP, a lot of it, for proper neurological function. When you get older, your neurons start to die. You don't have as many, many neurotransmitters being released. Why? Because your mitochondria isn't, isn't doing so well. So take C60, and it's going to improve your mitochondria and all your cells, including your neurons, and you're going to see better cellular health. And, and you look in the mirror after a year of taking this with a teaspoon a day, you're going to look a lot younger. You're going to look younger. You're going to feel better. You're going to feel younger. All right. If you work out, you want to take this, you want to take this for anyone. You want to take this on an empty stomach. So it's best to take it on an empty stomach for better absorption. But the fact is, is that if you work out, let's say you weight lift or, you know, you're running or whatever, you take this before your workout, you'll actually recover from your workout quicker. All right. So you can get it in a two ounce, a four ounce, or an eight ounce on my store, the-studio-reykjavik.com. C60 is a strong antioxidant in it, and it's part of the anti-aging protocol that I have. What is the anti-aging protocol that people, you know, people might ask? Well, it's, there's three pillars to it. There is the structural nanosilver liquids and gels to neutralize pathogens. So you aren't chronically fighting an infection. You want to bring down the the free radicals by taking C60, and you want to bring down pro-inflammatory cytokines. You want to bring down that inflammation. How do you do that? You take the turmeric and the ashwagandha. The turmeric brings down inflammation, ashwagandha controls your blood glucose levels and prevents that, that inflammatory response when you have a high glucose count, all right? Those are the three pillars for the anti-aging. You do that regularly and you're gonna age slower and you're gonna have more energy and you're gonna feel better. But if you couple that with other things that I have on the store, like the collagen and the B complex and the multivitamin, the digestive enzymes, the D3, the vitamin C, the zinc, right? You're, you're creating a really good supplement protocol to slow down in that aging process and boost up your immune system, all right? You also want proper sleep, proper diet, proper exercise, basically meaning that, you know, you, you know, walking is really important, doing some swimming if you have access to a pool, doing a little bit of, of uh, uh, elliptical or um, cycling, Try to stay away from overrunning. You don't want to put too much stress on your, on your joints. Proper balancing exercises, a little bit of yoga. Don't get too crazy. There's a lot of evidence to suggest that people that improve their balancing actually slow down the aging process. 
This is part of the reason why you start seeing people that are older having gait issues and balancing issues. Um, so you want your upper body stretching and, and balancing and your lower body stretching and balancing. Um, and challenge your brain, read, learn new subjects, talk to people in the real world. And when you do all these things on top of the, the protocol, the, uh, the supplementation, you're going to start seeing your body is healing and that you're aging slower and you're actually enjoying your life. All right. I know I sat when I do these shows that I seem like I'm like, you know, like, you know, talking in hyperbole and all that. But if you listen really closely to what I'm saying, I am right. All right. And when it comes to the crisis that we went through in 2020, the crisis that we're going through in the Middle East, the, the issues that people are starting to see with their immune system, you can benefit from the knowledge that I have. So please subscribe to my channels. I have three channels on YouTube. I have Bright Tea on BitChute and Rumble. It is important that you subscribe to all six channels. All the links are the, in the description of this video and all my videos. Subscribe. I'm heavily censored on YouTube. There's certain things I can keep up. There's a lot that I can't, especially about the post-COVID era, all right, and even during the COVID era. Now, that's a great way to follow my work. Please take the links and share them. Please tell your social network and your friends and family. Listen to what I have to say. They may not agree. I don't want everyone to agree with me. But you'll be able to learn about how to navigate through the problems that are, are going to arise in terms of health, in terms of finance, and in, in, in terms of this whole geopolitical thing that's happening in the Middle East. In addition, Please, if you can, especially, you know, the ones that are overseas. I have a lot of people that watch and follow me overseas and you can't purchase stuff from my store because I only sell in the United States uh, and Alaska and, and, and Hawaii. Um, I don't ship outside of the United States. So please, if you would like to help support my work, you can donate. You can donate through Stripe or PayPal on my website. It's the dash studio dash .com. Link is in the description of this video. Or you can donate through Buy Me a Coffee. Link is in the description of this video and all my videos. Or you can be a paid subscriber on my Patreon channel. All right. I don't put anything behind a paywall. Nothing. Nothing. Nothing is behind a paywall. I provide everything for free. All right. There's a lot of people that you listen to that will give you a clip and put it behind a paywall, the, the larger content. Because they think their information is so important that only a select few people should hear. I think that's wrong. So please help support my work by donating, by sharing the links, by subscribing, and by going to the store, the-studio-rakevic.com. Thank you for listening on, on X spaces as this simulcast is happening and uh for the ones that have been long-term followers and supporters uh i appreciate your 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 um your viewership and you know we're gonna go through tumultuous times but i'm not wrong on this i'm not i'm not wrong i wish i was wrong i wish over the last four years i was wrong on a lot of stuff but unfortunately it's quite the opposite i've been right way too much and you know just pay attention to what i have to say things are gonna get worse thank you for listening and oh by the way i released a white long video dealing with why it's tied to aids like syndrome it is episode 18 you'll be able to see that on rumble uh bit shoot and on YouTube. So please see that. I have to do a post process to be able to put it on, on Brighton. So I haven't done that yet. So it will be on Brighton also. So please see that. It's part two of a four part series. If you haven't seen part one, 
please see part one. Uh, again, the subtitle is China, White Lung, and Why It's Happening. And there's a part one and a part two that's published. I'll do part three and part four. Part four is going to be open to, to the, the, the whole goal here is part four will be open to the public to take your questions. Thank you for listening and have a nice day.